in the Pwn to Own Tokyo 2020 competition, we were finally crowned Master of Pwn. However, the competition was very dramatic, as manufacturers released last-minute firmware updates which killed a lot of vulnerabilities. Today, we will show you a chain of these vulnerabilities, which allow an unauthenticated attacker to execute code as root in a Western Digital NAS device and install a permanent backdoor. We will also show you why we think Western Digital screwed up and this might still be a zero day. Hey, this is Pedro. Before we go into the vulnerability details, let's quickly explain our position and why we're doing this. Here's the story. One week before Pwn to Own Tokyo 2020, Western Digital released a new update for their network attached storage NAS devices. This new update is called OS5, whereas the older one is OS3. It is a complete rewrite of the operating system. And Radek will show you the differences between the two shortly. This new operating system obviously killed a lot of vulnerabilities that other teams and us were going to use in Pwn to Own. In fact, it did wipe out some teams from the competition. This is all within Pwn to Own rules. What ZDI does is one day before the competition, they update all devices to the latest firmware. So you know what? Let's give them a taste of their own medicine. Let's give them one week to fix these vulnerabilities. The same week they gave us to find new vulnerabilities in OS 5. So as we are shooting this video, we gave vulnerability details to Western Digital. We don't know what's going to happen, if they're going to patch it or not. We'll do at the end of this video a one week video update to tell you what happened. And finally, let's justify ourselves. Why are we doing this? There are several reasons. First of all, OS 3 is out of support. There is a November 2020 advisory by other researchers that found remote code execution vulnerabilities in OS 3. Western Digital's official response was, if you have a supported model, upgrade to OS 5. Otherwise, disable remote access. That's it. They basically don't care about OS 3 anymore. Having said that, they just released the new OS 3 version in December 2020. So what gives WD? Do you support it or not? I guess we'll find out in one week, right? Secondly, we did a lot of research on Shodan and Binary Edge and only found a couple of thousand vulnerable devices, so we don't consider this high risk. And finally, we're also providing a patch at the end of this video, so stay tuned. So what do you think? Do you think we are a-holes or do you agree with us? Let us know in the comments. Okay, with that out of the way, let's go to Radek, which will show us our target. Western Digital MyCloud Pro Series PR 4100. Wow, what a log name. Let me introduce you our target. It's a 4-bay home NAS solution. Quite expensive. Has two internet and power ports for redundancy, so we can think that was designed for power users. You could use it for backups, pictures, movies, whatever you can think of. And yeah. Happy professional people also use it. Let's dive in into the management interface. It welcomes us with a status page. System is healthy and runs latest OS 3 firmware version. From a functionality point of view, you can add users, share folders, install apps, configure it with the internet cloud, do various backups, use write for disk, etc. In the settings, we can find a firmware update tab. I disabled auto updates, but I can still update firmware manually if I want to. For the research purposes, we are happy it supports SSH. Makes life much easier. The target is running OS 3. As mentioned before, OS 5 is a completely different operating system. In OS 5, most of the components were removed or rewritten to Golang. So the component that we're going to show you how we attacked doesn't exist anymore in OS 5. At the release of OS 5 in late October, only few devices from the Western Digital lineup supported it. That effectively means that Western Digital was running two parallel operating systems. What is more, a lot of functionality of the OS 3 were not yet ported to OS 5. When we tried to upgrade to OS 5, it actually bricked our device. So we couldn't get rid of the feeling that Western Digital decided to release a still working progress OS 5, which angered not only us, but also a lot of regular users. Take a look at the feedback shortly after the release. 
it broke a lot of users' functionality and also they were unable to roll back to S3 as Western Digital blocked such functionality. Actually, we found a way to roll back from OS5 to OS3, which we will show you later in the video. So if you hate OS5 as much as V2, continue watching the video to learn how to roll back and don't forget to apply patch uh, for the vuln that we are presenting. Okay, let's move on and SSH into the NAS. We have to use a pretty fine username SSHD. Okay, it has root privileges. A lot of process writing, all of them as root, awesome. Let's check if there are other users configured on the box. Hmm, okay, root, sshd, admin, all of them use the same password that I have set. But nobody and squeeze center, interesting. What are those? Can we crack the passwords? Let's set John with password and shadow files. We have to first use unshadow command to prepare it for John. Okay, we're good to go. First, we'll try the dictionary attack. Oh crap, the nobody user uses blank password. Sometime later and we have both accounts cracked, sweet. So can we just like that login with a user nobody? What? Oh no, doesn't let us in. What about the SSH? Hmm, same story. What a useless account. Okay, let's get back to our recon and see what processes are listening on the box. Okay, quite some other surface. Let's start from the top and look into that web interface. But I'm tired. Pedro, please take over and turn that useless nobody account into something positive. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Radek. This is Pedro. I'm going to take over and show you a bit of what we have on the device. If we start digging around the var www folder, we find this REST API folder. Looking a bit further, we will see that it has a lot of interesting directories. And then, if we dig still further, we'll find lots of PHP files. And it appears this is not the same as the web interface that Radek showed us. So, what can we do with it, right? If we couldn't use the nobody account for the other, perhaps we could use it for this one. So let's dig in a bit into it and investigate. Let's have a look at one of these files called storageusage.php. We have a short description and then we have a PHP class. It returns XML by default. Then again, we have some comments on the code and then the function uses a lot of PHP objects. Let's ignore it for now. So here in the description, we can see this is to check the storage being used by photos, etc. Importantly, no authentication is required. And also helpfully, we have here the URL we can use to access this API. It includes some optional parameters. We don't really care about that. And then also shows us possible response codes. Okay, this all looks good. So let's have a look at it in the device. We use curl and hit that URL then we can see what happens. And yeah, it seems to return the usage, you know, bytes being used. Okay, this looks good. Looks promising. Now we know how the API works for unauthenticated stuff. So now let's try and do something more interesting. Call an authenticated API using our nobody account. Here we have this API used to retrieve device info. It is authenticated. And here is the URL. Okay, we got some response codes and we got an expected response in XML. And here's the code. We don't need to focus on it. So the description tells us what it does. So now we do a curl request to it and as expected, we're not authorized to do it. So now let's try and inject our nobody user. So it has no password, so let's pass just the user and hopefully we'll be able to hit it. Not yet. So what's wrong? has an empty password. Maybe we should pass that as empty? Yeah, I guess so. doesn't make much sense, but we're hackers, right? We got to try all possibilities. Let's do it. Yeah, there we go. We're authenticated. This looks awesome. 
So now we can access authenticated APIs with that Nobody account. So let's just check with some bogus password and yeah, it wasn't a fluke. We can really do it. So now let's look at something more interesting. So now let's look at the file where we found a vulnerability. This file is called update.php and it's in the firmware folder. As the others, it extends the REST component and the default data format is XML. Okay, so this file has several methods on it. The first one is a get request. Here's the URL and what it does returns status of the firmware update in progress, doesn't require any auth. Yeah, this is not interesting for us, right? From a vulnerability point of view. So let's just skip it, okay? Then we got the put request, which is a bit more interesting. Causes the NAS to fetch an update firmware. Hmm, to the same URL as put and then take some parameters. So it looks like it downloads something and installs it as firmware. So this definitely looks interesting. But you know, let's keep going and see what the rest of the file has. Here's the put, we go on. Here's our post request. So this is more interesting. Causes the NAS to update the firmware in the file that is copied to the device. Hmm, okay. So it has some parameters like file path, but looks like if we don't specify that parameter, the file is assumed to be streamed as part of the HTTP post. So does this mean if we do a post to this URL, it will take whatever we have in a post body and accept it as a firmware file? Possible, right? Okay, let's look at then this post method and understand what's going on. So it takes the files array. So this files array is something that is built in PHP. When you upload the file, it gets filled with the file name and the file data, all of this. It does something with it and then passes to this manual firmware update function. Okay, let's see what goes on here. If file path's not set and if file temp name exists, it builds some sort of file path that appends cache volume to the name you provide and then moves this uploaded file to cache volume. Okay, looking at it as a hacker, we can see maybe there is some potential for directory traversal so we can write files arbitrarily. Unfortunately, PHP is quite smart and sanitizes the file name, so there's nothing we can do with it. Anyway, in essence, what's happening here is that our file is being file name is being concatenated with cache volume written to there and then passed to manual firmware update. So now let's look at the device, see what happens. Here we got a curl post request to that firmware update. Mm, user not authorized. Okay, but remember we got our little trick, right? So we pass user is nobody and then we give it an empty password. And then let's see what happens. And bingo, mm, something happened. This looks really promising. I think we need, need to dig further. Okay, so let's have a look at it again. Here's the post where it explained what hand passes on with those parameters. Then manual firmware update gets invoked with our query parameters, which is basically the file. So let's have a look at that in another tab. Here it is. It just takes the file path from us and then does escape shell arc. If you're not familiar with it, it's a PHP function that escapes arguments to be used in shell scripts and in system calls, this kind of thing. So that's quite unfortunate because here would be quite a nice command injection if they didn't use it, but looks like they were smart. Anyway, our arguments get passed to update firmware from file.sh, which is a shell script. Okay, that's basically our file being passed there. That's fine. Let's have a look at it again. Okay, here's the update firmware from file. Okay, we can see it takes a file name as a parameter, which gets passed from the post request, an optional check file size parameter. We don't care about that. So there's some parameter checking, then the check size, we don't care. Okay, we move on. We have some upload firmware binary we don't know being invoked. Our file gets copied to user local upload new firmware. And then another binary we don't know, upload firmware gets invoked with this new firmware file, reboots, done. Okay, let's dig in a bit more. Let's recap all of this. Here we have our bold but very good looking hackers. And on the right side, our vulnerable REST API. So our hacker sent an HTTP post with a malicious firmware. 
This gets processed in the post method, manual firmware update method, update firmware from flash shell file, goes into some unknown binary, and then we pwn it? I guess so. But wait, it's not that simple. It expects a certain firmware format. But here's the thing. Luckily for us, there's no cryptographic checks on this firmware. So if you can guess the format, you can really own it. Okay, so let's recap and look at all the volumes we have. First, we authenticate using the nobody user and an NP password. Then, we send our malicious firmware. We have to pack this firmware in a certain format, but is not cryptographically checked. And yes, we do consider this a vulnerability. If you disagree, let us know in the comments. But here are our three volumes. I know I keep saying that the firmware has to be in a certain format, but we haven't showed you how. Here's the thing, if you go to Western Digital support page for this device, you scroll down, you will see they have GPL for download, GPL package. It's quite a large package, covers a lot of versions, and this is what we use in our exploit. So in reality, we didn't really find out how the firmware needs to be packaged. We use this GPL to do everything for us in the exploit. Very easy. And with this, off to Radek again to show us the exploit in action. So that useless Lombardi account is not really that useless anymore? Cool. It's time to pawn the box. Let's look into the exploit. It's just a bash script, really. On top, we have a nice banner that says that we were supposed to use it at pawn2 on Tokyo 2020. The script takes only one argument, the IP address of the target. Next, we have a variable that holds information for which firmware we want to build the image. At this stage, we just download the package from the Western Digital website and untar it. Now we have to prepare a new firmware. We replace the firmware version to anything that we want. This is the version that the target will think it will run. We are lit right, so let's put the version number accordingly. So with the vulnerability that we have, we can only upload the firmware, but we still need a code execution. There are many ways to do it, obviously. We simply found a binary that starts at the system boot and replace it with a malicious file. It will simply start telnet D on port 4444. Okay, we are done with files modifications, so we can build a file system image. There is a create image.sh script that we can use uh, for that, and that comes with the GPL package. We make sure that we have it uh, in the merge folder that stores all the components that will be used to create a final firmware image. We go to the directory and we can build a final firmware together with kernel, bootloader and other components that come by default with the GPL package. So now we can use the curl to exploit a vuln and send our firmware to the target. We'll abuse the firmware update API call with the username nobody and empty password. Now, sit back and relax. The script is constantly making connections to port 4444. When the box is flashed, it opens the telnet D port and we're in. Let's start the exploit. First, the GPL firmware package is downloading. Now we build our flashback image with the backdoor. Okay, Larry, so what are we gonna do? Everything is ready to send it. We let this baby leave or what? I don't know, I just woke up from a little nap. It's a little dark, but you guys silly? I'm still gonna send it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't argue with Larry, let's do it. We're uploading the firmware and the firmware is being installed. Now it will take a while. And we root. We win. So obviously, this exploit would work over the internet if you enabled remote management access. So don't be a noob and disable it immediately. As you want to make internet a safer place and save you from nude pictures leak, 
we have a nice surprise for you. A patch. Thanks for that, Radek. So now we know that we have a vulnerability. We know how to exploit it. But here's the thing. If Western Digital is not going to fix it, how do we fix it? One thing we didn't touch in this video is how authentication is done. We're not going to go into detail, this would make the video too boring. But at the top level of each API folder, there's this XML file like the one we're seeing on the screen. For each controller and URL, it contains the security of each HTTP method. So we can see a get, put, we can see post, and then there are tags with a certain string that identifies the kind of authentication required. For example, no auth lan, user auth, admin auth. I think those are pretty self-explanatory, right? So let's go to our firmware. And here we see our firmware update. We see the get method has no user auth, the post requires your user auth and the put admin auth. Why is post and put different? Don't know, ask WD, they're the ones who screwed up. But to fix it, we just replace user auth in the post with admin auth. We save the file, and now our API is authenticated, only an admin can access, and nobody should not be used to access it. So let's try it out with curl and see what happens. Send a request. Oh, looks like we can still hit the API with a nobody user. What went wrong here? You know, the problem might be that while we updated the XML, the server didn't pick it up automatically. So let's find out where the HTTP server is running. So we just copy its arguments so we can run it again. And now we're going to kill it and then restart it. And hopefully it will pick up our API changes. So we do that. And now we use curl to try and hit it again with nobody user. And there we go. Our vuln is now fixed. We're not vulnerable anymore. However, there's a catch. This patch will not survive a reboot. This is because the NAS uses the SquashFS file system, which is embedded in the firmware. And while we could use our exploit to install a patched firmware, an exploit like this can be quite dangerous and break some devices. So instead, we're providing in the video description a link to a GitHub which includes an automated shell script that you need to run at every reboot and it will patch this vulnerability. But remember, do not expose your NAS to the internet. This is the most important. As we mentioned before, we believe early release of OS 5 was not production ready. It actually bricked our target and we had to find a way to unbreak it. And here comes a bonus point. Western Digital claims you cannot roll back from OS 5 to OS 3. <laughs> Guess what? A while back I have posted on Twitter how to downgrade. Now let's see that in action. You have to open the case. It's really just a mini computer in there. Immediately you can spot the interface, which could be a UART. And it is. So we need a UART USB device to connect to UART pins. If you haven't watched our video about UART, I strongly suggest you watch it, as we go in details what UART is, how to identify pins and how to use it. Let's connect to the console. You can enter the BIOS if you wanted to, but uh, here we have a group and look, we can pick a rescue mode. Sounds legit, I'm sure it must be useful. You can even log into the console as root, but we don't have to. And you know why? Because rescue mode exposes a nice web interface, which can be used to flash any firmware, no restrictions whatsoever. Let's wait for it to finish flashing. And that's it, we are back in OS3. We win. Okay guys, it's been one week since we sent the original email. We did a follow-up shortly, so we used my email address, we used Radex email address, so to make sure it didn't land in their spam folder, we didn't get an answer. In their security page, they answer in three days. They say so, three business days, so maybe they are busy or they don't care, we don't know. Anyway, this leaves you two options. So either you apply your patch or you upgrade to OS 5. You can find the link to the patch in the description. Make sure to subscribe to our channel, watch other videos and take care.